Hello. In this video, we'll talk about the transconductance or GM of a MOS transistor. GM is one of the most important design parameter in many of the analog designs. For example, in a typical amplifier design, GM defines gain, bandwidth or speed, settling behavior, matching, noise. So in fact, a lot of important parameters are defined by GM. So it's very useful to develop a good understanding of MOS GM. We can understand GM in many different ways. So consider an NMOS with some positive VGS and positive VDS across it and a current ID flowing into drain to source. So we can consider VGS as the input and ID as the output. So when we change the VGS, we'll get a corresponding change in ID. And this voltage to current gain is called transconductance or GM. So GM is change in drain current divided by change in gate to source voltage. So unit of GM is ampere per volt, which is also known as Siemens or S. So this unit is inverse of resistance unit, which is Ohm. And it is also known as Mo, which is Ohm spelled in reverse way. Now if we plot ID versus VGS graph, we notice that it is a very nonlinear curve. In the beginning, there is hardly any change in ID as we change VGS, while at higher VGS, ID changes rapidly. So from this equation, GM will be very small in the beginning, and as we move right, GM will increase. Something like this red curve. Now notice that here I am not implying any particular graph, I am just saying that GM is increasing as we move from left to right. Now in a typical analog circuit, we don't usually traverse up and down this curve. We usually have what we call as DC operating point or quiescent point. So here we have a fixed VGS and fixed ID in a transistor. Now if we calculate GM at this quiescent point, then GM will be the slope of this curve at this quiescent point from this equation. And this is called linearization of the circuit around quiescent point. Another term for this process is small signal analysis and this GM is a small signal GM. So this was a graphical way of defining GM. Now let's look at a more mathematical way of defining GM. Here we are defining three types of signals. The first red quantity in the right is our Q point or DC operating point. The signal in black is small signal overriding this Q point. And the total signal is on the left hand side in blue. Now we know that ID is a nonlinear function of VGS. So we can write a Taylor series expansion of this function around the quiescent point. And it looks like this. Here first term is DC operating current ID. Second term contains the partial derivative of total quantities multiplied by small signal VGS. Third term contains second partial derivative of total quantities multiplied by the small signal VGS squared. The next term will contain third partial derivative of total quantities multiplied by cube of small signal VGS and so on and so forth. Now here is the crucial step. If small signal quantities are a small proportion of total quantities, let's say for example 1%, then square of this term will be even further small. So for 1%, the square will be 0.01%. Q will be even further small, it would be 0.0001%. So for such small signal analysis in this equation, we can practically ignore all the higher order terms. So we are left with only two terms. And if we cancel the DC current from both sides, then we are only left with small signal equation. And in fact, this term in blue is our transconductance GM. Okay, so that was quite mathematical. And let's go back to devices and circuits again. So let's start with NMOS in strong inversion and in saturation region. So here VGS mass VT much greater than zero signifies that NMOS is in strong inversion. We'll see the meaning of much greater sometime later. And VDS greater than VGS mass VT signifies that NMOS is in saturation. And here is well known MOS squared law current equation. And if we use the equation of GM from our mathematical section and differentiate ID with respect to VGS, then we arrive at our first GM equation. 
so here is our first gm equation and i'm saying first because we'll see that there are two more form of this gm equation so we see that there are four terms in these equations mu n which is mobility of the electron c ox which is the unit oxide capacitance gate capacitance w by l is aspect ratio and vgs minus vt is overdrive so mu n c ox is technology constant and often not in the control of designer w by l and vgs minus vt are the design parameters we can derive the other two form by some algebraic manipulation i have squared the whole term and then taken the under root then i multiplied and divide by 2 to take out the id equation and here is our second form to derive the third form we can again start with the equation 1 now multiply and divide the equation by 2 vgs minus vt and then take out the id equation again out of it and this is our third form so here i have summarized these three equations in these three equations we have three design parameters current id aspect ratio w by l and vgs minus vt and we have one technology parameter mu and c ox these three form often cause a confusion especially if you see equation 1 and equation 3 looks like in equation 1 gm is proportional to vgs minus vt but equation 3 it looks like it is inversely proportional to vgs minus vt similarly in equation 2 it is proportional to root of id but equation 3 it is proportional to id so how can we understand these apparent contradictions so it looks like that gm is the function of three design variables something like this but the key thing to realize here is that there are only two independent variables. So if for example I have fixed W by L and ID, I have no control or no choice on GGS minus VT. It has to be a fixed value. Or if design requires a particular ID and overdrive, then it just can't have any control over W by L. It will be fixed by these two values. So this is the key thing to remember. There are only two variables which are independent. If we also look at the equations, any one equation contains only two values so first equation doesn't contain id second doesn't contain overdrive and third doesn't contain w by l second confusion is when do we use which equation so let's look at some examples to better understand this here we have a diode connected nmos with a fixed w by l and it is biased by a current source id and we want to know what happens if we increase id so how gm and vgs changes Okay, so which equation do we use? So thing to remember is that we want to use an equation where the fixed quantity is present. So that means we want to use the equation where W by L is present. So we have two equations, first one and second one. And then we want to use the equation which contains the variable. So that means we want to choose this equation for this condition. So this equation tells us that for a fixed W by L, the GM varies with square root of ID. So let's plot it. So here the GM increases with the square root of ID. Now let's see what we can tell about VGS minus VT. So in the first equation, the mu n cux W by L is constant because W by L is fixed in our example. So GM is proportional to VGS minus VT. Now since GM is increasing by under root of ID, we'll expect that VGS minus VT will also increase in the similar way. So here is VGS minus VT in blue line and it is proportional to root of id and this curve is not at all surprising because we already know the square law formula of current id now let's see what the third equation tells us here id is increasing linearly and vgs minus vt we just saw that increasing by under root of id so we can see that this equation also tells us the same thing that gm is increasing by under root of id something like this so we see that all three equations tell us the same story. Now let's see another example. Now let's say we have a fixed VGS and we are changing W by L and we want to see how GM and ID varies. So in this graph we have W by L in the X axis and GM in the Y. So which equation do we use? So we want to use the equation which contains VGS and W by L. So this equation. And this equation tells us that for a fixed VGS minus VT if we increase W by L linearly, the GM will also increase linearly. Something like this. Now what about ID? 
So now let's use the equation where we have ID and VGS minus VT. So this equation and it tells us that for a fixed VGS minus VT, GM and ID are proportional. So that means ID will also increase linearly. So something like this in this blue line. Notice that these slopes can be different depending on your proportionality constant. So I have assumed it different so that they do not overlap each other. Now let's look at third equation and see what it tells us. In this equation W by L is increasing linearly and ID we have just seen is increasing linearly. So a linear multiplied by a linear dependence is a square dependence but there is a square root over it. So it again becomes overall a linear dependence. So this equation is telling us a linearly increasing GM and we know that this is what is happening here. So again we see that all three equations tell us the same story. In summary we are saying that for a fixed VGS if we increase W by L for example make it double then GM doubles and ID also doubles and it makes sense because it means that we are having more parallel devices so we are repeating every branch multiple times so these equations make sense in that way. Now you can play with different combination for example keep ID fixed and vary W by L and see what happens to GM and VGS or any other combination and convince yourself that all these three equations tell you the same story and there is no contradiction really and that will also make you understand the behavior of GM better. Now there is more to this GM story for example GM of MOS in sub threshold, GM of BJT and how it compares with GM of MOS, GM in velocity saturation region, GM in linear region but I'm really short of time in this video and I'll make a follow up video for this advanced topic. So thanks for watching and post your comments below.